Okay, today we're gonna talk about potatoes. Um, I know, potatoes. You can buy them at the store, they're pretty cheap, but everybody loves them, so if you can grow them free at your house, why not? I have an old garden patch, well, I'll show you in a minute, back there, and it's old and ugly and kind of run down. I'll explain it all in a minute, what happened to it. But even after I have my new garden fully flourishing and growing, I'm gonna keep that because I built it, so why not, and just use it to grow potatoes. Um, I'm trying out the Ruth Stout method this year. Once again, I'll explain more about that in a minute. And I'm just really so excited about it. Even though it's the middle of January, I wanna talk about it. So here we go. Those of you who don't know what the Ruth Stout method of gardening is, it uh, essentially is piling up hay, straw, leaves, you know, debris that's needing to break down in, back into nature. And using that as a medium to grow things that are just pretty easy to grow, potatoes being one of them. This whole garden area uh, was the garden that I had before I even knew we were gonna build a new house. And I made it myself, so that's why it's poorly constructed, with chicken wire. And all of this pink tape around is to keep the deer from trying to jump in it. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because of chicken wire being so transparent, but a lot of the chicken wires tore down because the deer, I guess, didn't see it or were just being very bold and thought, you know what, I'm gonna jump in there. And so it got a little bit torn down. And so that's to help them realize, no, this is a no-go for you. It won't end well for you. So in my future garden, I'm gonna have raised beds with mulched lockways. But in here, um, I started this before I knew as much as I know now. And as you can see, it's just full of weeds. Anytime you're not actively weeding over the winter or whatever, it just completely fills with weeds. So it, it's, uh, it's really difficult to keep up with. And so as you can see back there, there's tons of cardboard boxes that I've laid down. And I'm gonna lay more down and put mulch on top of them. And what the point of that is, is a weed barrier. And with the Ruth Stout method, you don't even need soil. Essentially, all you'd have to do is like set a hay bale there, or some thick hay, and in my case, potatoes. You'd put your potato that's sprouting in it, or your sweet potato slips and they would grow. It sounds hard to believe, it's hard for me to believe as well, but I've seen it many times uh, in things I've read and in things I've watched, and so I'm trying it this year and I'll bring you along for the journey to see how it goes. Uh, in the meantime, let me show you these guys. These are some snow peas that I've started. I can't, uh, even though, as I've mentioned many times, I'm about to have a whole new garden, I can't stop planting things and I just get so excited about it. So they're doing good, this little guy, is starting to climb on to the little trellis thing I made. I'm very pumped about it. These are just plants of flowers that I've seeded and they're just teeny tiny right now. Like this is some Chinese firmament, AKA forget-me-nots. And what else do we have? Cosmos. And this is some stock. Stock are like big purpley blue, beautiful guys. So anyway. I have little seed potatoes that I'm starting myself from store-bought potatoes because who doesn't have a pantry full of potatoes that have little sprouts growing out of them once in a while? So why not just throw them in the garden? That's controversial. Some people think that's not a good idea. I don't care. I'm doing it. <laughs> and the other thing that I'm really excited about that I'm going to show you is my sweet potato starts. So here we go. Sweet potatoes are... A whole different ball game to start than regular potatoes because you have to grow slips you can't just have the little chits off of the potatoes you have to actually start slips and there's the start of a sweet potato slip I've tried to do this before and failed I'm extremely excited about this because if you don't have to buy something at the store it makes it that much more cost-effective to do what I did here is took some sweet potatoes that I had bought from the store, staked them with toothpicks, uh, filled the jars with water, and just waited. It takes a long time. It took about two weeks for the root systems to start growing, and then just recently, we started having little sprouts. And from what I hear, each sweet potato, I mean like, the sky's the limit on how many sweet potato slips you can get out of it. And when those have finished forming and you have like a little plant sticking out of your sweet potato, you take it off and you place it into its own jar of water and that slip will start growing its own roots and that's what you plant in the ground. And then it grows its own root system fully and you have more sweet potatoes. So as a person who loves sweet potatoes, 
the fact that this is even starting to be successful for me is extremely exciting. Sweet potatoes are extremely finicky as far as weather is concerned. Uh, very frost intolerant because they're a tropical South American plant. So I literally have taken these inside every night and put them outside to have sunshine on them only on days that are above 60 degrees because they have to have warm weather. And I've been babying these so thoroughly that you can imagine my excitement that this is actually successful so far. <laughs> So there you go. That is what I have going on with my potatoes so far. Hopefully it'll be an abundant, beautiful crop of potatoes. And if I feel miserably, that'll be good entertainment too. Anything that you heard on here today, if you're like, I don't agree with that, that's that's completely wrong. Let me know down in the comments because as I've stated before, I'm the furthest thing there is from a professional gardener. I have a lot to learn and uh, I could use all the help I can get. <laughs> but hopefully things will go well. And if they don't, comedic value, right? All right, that's all for this episode of Garden Full of Gnomes. I've got a garden full of gnomes. Yeah.